Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So today's video is super special because it's the first of its kind and this is the question of the month. So this is the question of April 2021 and the question is by Venkatesan R and the question is how do you do ML monitoring so that if you, you know, monitor uh, the performance of an ML model for some time, how do you figure out when it is time to retrain it? So how do you detect drifts? And is there some tools and, and methods in which, especially for you know, medical and biomedical images, let's say that you've created models, how do you know that the model has gotten stale or if the data is inadequate? So in essence, you really need to retrain the model. So. Today's video is all about ML monitoring using free tools and today's session is going to be based using weights and biases. So if you like content such as this, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So let's start with understanding what the premise of the problem at hand is and we are calling it ML monitoring at production. So this is going to be the first video in the sequence that I'm going to be producing over the next few weeks. And that's going to be talking about machine learning models in production time. So where we focus more about the inference rather than at the training aspects of machine learning models. So for the example today, I am going to be using the or reusing essentially the unit model for semantic segmentation that I've already published. And I'll be linking that in the description box below. But here, let's consider that you already have medical images. In this case, it's retinal images from, let's say, a camera A. And then you use these uh, images in order to train a machine learning model to detect pathology in, in images such as this. And of course, while you beta test, if all the images are from this camera A, you will start getting good results where you start seeing that all the red lesions and the bright lesion areas are actually correctly identified. But now, let's say at production time, you start getting data from camera B. In which case, if you start testing these retinal images produced from camera B onto the same ML model, your outcome will not be exactly as similar in quality as you had for the initial image. So, of course, here you see, you know, there's it, this looks more like a gobbledygook than as good as, as defined, you know, boundaries that you had seen from, from camera A. So ideally, what went wrong and how can you detect that such a situation is happening and identify that, yes, you definitely need to retrain maybe using some offset on, on images from camera A or maybe just using a few images from camera B itself. So the question at hand that we are trying to answer is how to detect if test data at production time is not giving the appropriate results that needed and how do you monitor ML models and identify when they need to be retrained. So first, let's try to understand some of the, of the, of the metrics here, which is called data drift versus concept drift. So consider that you already have a machine learning model that has been trained on your you know, cameras from, from images from camera A. Now you might have to detect the change in data distribution. So if the underlying data distribution, such as the field of view or the spatial resolution, so let's say that now the images are extremely zoomed in or they are extremely zoomed out or the field of view is highly different so that if the images don't look at all as, as what they were trained on or as the model was, was trained on, then in that case, a drift can happen. So let's look at the situation here. So of course, the on the left hand side, the DB1, these are like you know 45 to 55 degree field of view images, while this is you know 25 to, to, to 30 degree field of view images. So they are much more zoomed in. And of course, the nature of the blood vessels, the thickness, and also the pixel resolution is going to be much different. Um, so that's why obviously, even from the, from, from the first get go, we understand that there is a data drift in this case. So the solution in such a case would be to retrain on some images from camera B or to augment the images from camera A to look as similar as possible to camera B. So ideally, maybe zoom in, zoom out. So the data augmentation has to take care so that you are able to uh, create similar uh, variants from you know, camera B as you have from camera A. And then the second aspect of it is concept drift. So machine learning models, once you know they have been deployed for a long time, they can also get stale. 
And what that means is there could occur a change in pixel to pathology relationship. So in this case, the, the, the input to the output relationship can have changed. And this change can happen. Let's say there is poor lighting or there is imaging artifacts. So if you are, you are changing from you know, one imaging modality to the other, also there can be compression. So if the images are in, you know, stored in, in different file formats, so TIFFs versus PNGs versus GIFs, and also the pixel resolution plays a huge uh, you know, role in, in saying that you know, the model is, is not serving this new data set as it should have. So in this case, the solution will be verification using explainable models because here you are not really monitoring the data itself but you are monitoring more the, the relationship between the input and the output. So use of explainable models as well as a canary builds or AB, AB testing can be hugely beneficial in this case. A canary build is typically you know, the, the setup where let's say you already have one ML model which is, which is deployed, you are essentially using your new ML model, which is the variant, maybe it has already trained on some you know, pixels of um, you know, camera B, then you are using that in the shadow mode. So you're using the, you're taking the input from the users, but you actually have a shadow mode in order to quickly verify if the ML model is doing what it is supposed to do. So these could be some ways in order to detect data drift and concept drift. Now let's look at the ML monitoring metrics that we will be covering in the in the code that I explain next. First of all, in order to detect the data distribution, what we can look at is the unscaled maximum and mean pixel values per image. So if the mean and the maximum values are, are very different, you might see that uh, you know that the model is actually that's the reason why the model is not working well because that underlying data distribution has changed a lot. Then this other aspect in medical images is image quality. If there is some metric that you can use to detect image quality, then that should be another aspect that should be monitored, um, you know, at, at runtime for your, you know, production, uh, for, for your, you know, ML production. And in this case, we are actually going to be using the intersection over union between multiple runs. And again, this is another video that I'll be linking in the description box below, in which I'm able to explain that if you use dropout and if the, if the relative variance between uh, the outcomes that you get by using dropout at test time is highly different, that means the image quality is actually poor. So then um, the, the, the other aspect that that was the you know, data drift. And now in order to detect concept drift, we can look at metrics such as relative area of lesions. So we have bright lesions, we have red lesions. So the relative area of the lesions would be sum all of, of all of the area of all of the pixels that belong to the bright lesion or red lesion divided by the total number of pixels. So these would be then you know, metrics that you need to monitor. One thing that I will mention here is Understand that when we are you're monitoring at production time, you don't really have ground truth or you there is no way for you to, to find out what the actual semantic segmentations were. So that's the reason why the ML monitoring metrics are generally always different from the from the training and, and the testing metrics, because generally in train and test time, you use accuracy as a metric. But in ML monitoring, you tend you tentatively never use accuracy because there is no way for you to know what the real outcome was. So that's why you have to you know, make sure that you understand what these monitoring metrics would be in order to detect data drift and model drift uh, or, or concept drift. And in most cases, such as the example that I'm talking about, you will see that there is data drift as well as concept drift both happening at the same time. And if you are able to detect it, then you will be able to figure out what are the methods that you should apply so that you should retrain on this new camera so you get a better ML model that serves camera B as well. So now let's get straight into the code that I will be releasing in the GitHub along with this video. So in this exercise, what we will be doing is, and I'm going to be reusing a code base that I've already explained and is linked in this video. It, this one is the one in which I use UNET in order to do multi-class semantic segmentation. So the first step is generation of ground truth or GT, which is labels uh, corresponding to each and every image. So the ground truth actually looks like this. So in this case, uh, blue means the background, 
red means uh, you know red lesions and green means uh, you know bright lesions for diabetic retinopathy so this is the data that we are working against i'm not going to be running this this uh, collab again if you have questions please do watch the video which is linked right here and in the description box below as the step one now in order to you know let's say that we have this particular data and we have this unit model that i can definitely you know train on this one data set but the question we are trying to answer today is how do you know that for production at production time so let's say that now you have a new test data set which is different from the one that you have already trained on the the question you're trying to answer is when do you no, can you monitor this ML model on production data and figure out that you need to retrain? Now, for this exercise, we will be using this site called Weights and Biases. It is actually free for, for uh, researchers. But again, for if you're trying to use production data, then there's actually a cost. So I'd highly recommend you sign up on, on this particular website. All you need to do is just sign up and then you will have a you know, project page just like this. You do not need to do anything on weights and biases. The collab will automatically you know, interface with the, with the weights and biases and generate the plots that are of, of interest. So let's step to uh, step through uh, you know this this code right here. So we are starting by mounting the drive. So first of all, uh, I am you know pointing this in the in the location where all of the code is. So and this code is again from the GitHub. The first step here is to install weights and biases, and that is what VanDB is. So what we are doing is we are just installing or creating this uh, link from your collab to weights and biases and then we are going to uh, initiate a login process into weights and biases now it will say that you need to authorize usage so i just click on this link this particular uh, thing gets copied onto my uh, keyboard and then i just hit enter and now my key has already been returned so this means my collab can now interface directly with my weights and biases portal so anything that i run here i will be able to visualize and and monitor the metrics in weights and biases. The next step is just uh, as in the previous video, we are just going to be stepping through, um, you know, all of the libraries. Again, we are using a unit model of depth four. And again, there are three classes. Uh, all of the other, uh, you know, helper functions are same. There is one new helper function here, and I will explain why this is, is important because we are going to be monitoring uh, the, the metrics at, at runtime, right, for, for production data. So right now we are just scrolling through all of the all of the different functions because our first step is to train the model. But if you see in the previous video, like uh, you know, which is the the linked video, there we were looking at the training on uh, TensorBoard. But now instead of TensorBoard, we will actually be looking or monitoring the performance on weights and biases directly. So this is foregoing the usage of TensorBoard completely. And then we are rather uh, preferring weights and biases for the complete monitoring. So now that all of the ground truth has been read, this is where the weights and biases is actually uh, invoked. And whenever uh, WANDB is, is invoked, it will tell you that it is logged in and it will generate a run page. So previously this, this project, which is unit, was did not exist. But now there is this run page and you can actually look at, you know, the everything that is going on on this run page. So here is where you can now see that there are these charts. So this accuracy plot, the loss plot and the epochs, you can actually see all of this changing in runtime. Of course, there's this modification in, in you know, the GPU usage. So there's a lot of system level parameters that you can also uh, now, you know, be able to monitor just because you're using the weights and biases, uh, you know, uh, hook in order to send all of the data to WANDB. All right, so now we see that the training process has completed. So all of the 30 epochs that I had asked, this is now done. And now if I look at that, the at the final plots. Now notice that these are actually monitoring plots for the training process only. This has nothing to do with production data yet. So you're still in the training process. And again, if you see the CPU usage is also pretty stable. So there's no spikes or anything out of the ordinary that would say that, okay, something is wrong. So now that all of the, the training process is complete, now consider this, this model is now being used to generate, you know, uh, test images. So in, in, in our case, we actually have this, uh, you know, test folder. And in this case, now what is happening is this prediction images corresponding to the bright lesions and the red lesions is now getting generated. So now that you have, uh, you know, all of these uh, created, the next step would be to monitor at production time. So let's say you have already trained this, uh, you know, data set on 
the DB1 data set. But now what you want to do is you want to look for drift. So in this case, the, the, the two kinds of drift that I mentioned, one is concept drift and then one is data drift. So the first parameter uh, that I'm choosing will, will definitely indicate data drift. And in this case, what we are looking for is the maximum pixel value and the mean pixel value that uh, you know is, is there in, in a particular test image. And then after that, what I'm also trying to figure out is, is there a way to detect image quality? So the assumption here is because it's a unit with the dropout. And again, I will link uh, the other video where in which I, I talk about image quality using dropout. The concept is if you are trying to predict uh, the, the region of interest in, in different images, if using the dropout, you get very similar regions, that means the image quality is good. But if the relative overlap in different, um, you know, in different estimations is very low, that means the image is blurry or poor quality. So, and that is something that we are trying to detect. So what we do is we just invoke the test generator and predict uh, the, the, the regions of interest twice. And then we try to find the intersection of, of over union, um, you know, for these predicted regions. And then this is the place where we actually do the monitoring for all of the parameters at production time. So now we see that the process is completed. And now if I refresh the charts, you will now be able to see that there are these other plots corresponding to production time. So now let's look at what these different you know, parameters are. First of all, this is you know, detecting your maximum pixel value. Again, it is scaled in 0 to 1. For the red lesions, this is where I am trying to find the intersection over union. So how many images, you know, have a, uh, if you have two different outcomes, then what is the intersection of over union for the for the red lesions? And the same thing, you will have a you know intersection over union for the for the bright lesions. Also, there is a bright lesion fractional area. There is a batch processing time minimum pixel. You know, in this case, is actually mean pixel pixel value. And also, there is like a, a fractional. So, how much fractional area is the is the RL or the red lesions uh, are are they you know looking for? And then there is an IOU of the bright lesions as well. So these now become my monitoring or production time monitoring parameters. Now, in order to understand what these parameters are actually doing, this is where I now start reading stair data set. Now, stair data set has 20 images and I'm treating it just as test data. So my, my, my model is already pre-trained on DB1. I'm not you know, retraining on any stair data set, but I'm just using it at test time. My goal here is to figure out if I just test it and monitor using the parameters that I've already, you know, trained for, can I detect that now the there is a drift or not? Is there a data drift or is there a concept drift? Is it possible for me to detect those drifts right now? So now that all of these steps are done, I just go to this page and I refresh it. And now you start seeing that the, the green plot is, is actually the stair plot and the red plot is actually the, the DB1 uh, data set plot. So now if you see the data mean, significantly you see there is a difference in this batch. The, the RL, the fractional area, there is a significantly change, there is a significant amount of change in this. In the, in the bright lesion fractional area, there is a significant amount of change. The batch processing time, more or less, it, it is similar, but then again, if I go to the you know IO intersection over union BL again, this parameter is not very descriptive. But if we use the mean the mean value and if we also use the fractional areas, we can clearly see that this is a new data set. So now if we have to identify is this happening because of data drift or is it because of concept drift? The answer is it's happening because of both. Because here, you know, the, the data mean and the data max, this is telling you that the data distribution itself has changed. And the fractional area, this is now telling you that the relationship between the input pixels and the outcome has now changed. So in this case, the, out, the, the, the learning from this process is as soon as there is this new data set, either your augmentation has to happen such that you are zooming in more because your field of view is different, or you definitely need to retrain on some, you know, small, even if it's a smaller sample set 
from this stair data set in order to consistently have uh, you know good performance metrics for the stair data set as well and if we, in in this case if we go to the stair spread here you can actually see that the regions of interest that get start getting predicted is huge right so you can see that these are not very good quality predictions to begin with and the reason why this is happening because the ml model has not not ever seen images like this so ideally it should have been trained on sample images from stair data set in order to have given a uh, you know a good outcome so that was my outcome and and uh, you know showing you this this performance on weights and biases uh, next week i will be showing you some more uh, ml monitoring tools so that you can stay on top of your ml models and figure out you know when your your model actually needs to be retrained and using what kind of data set so please stay tuned